morning, friends. I'm so glad you're here, and I'm so glad today we get to make our very own sea stars. But before we begin, I wanted to show you a picture of a sea star and some very important parts um, on a sea star's body. So on a sea star, they have spiny skin to protect the sea star from harm. So I have a sea star right here. He's not alive anymore, and he has this spiny skin to protect himself from harm, from predators. And then on the tips of the arms, they call these the arms, there are little eye spots. This helps the sea star find food. Now, I never knew sea stars have eye spots at the tip of their arms. And then on the other side of a sea star, the under part, they have these tube-like feet. And the tube-like feet are, are sticky and it helps the sea star move. So if you look close on the sea star, you'll see these tube-like feet that help them to move and stick to the rocks, right? So they don't get washed out in the tides. And in the very center of a sea star, the very center is the, is the mouth and it's used to eat. But this one is not like yours. This is not like your mouth. A sea star's stomach pushes its, pushes out of its mouth. Its stomach enters the shell of, um, of, the, of an other animal to eat it. So it pushes its stomach out and then eats it with its mouth. So if you look in here, down in that hole, that is the mouth of the sea star. And then of course the sea star has these arms and these um, the arms can open the shells of mussels and clams. Sea stars eat the insides. An arm can grow back if it gets cut off. So like lizards regenerate their tails, if their arm gets cut off, it can grow back. So this is the anatomy of a sea star. This is the body parts that we are gonna be making today. Um, and sea star is one of my favorite creatures in a type one. I love this book. It comes from this book, Sea Stars. So today we're going to make our very own sea star. So if you look into your materials folder or envelope, you will find a bag that looks like this, a plastic bag. And inside this plastic bag, there is a sea star that has been traced for you. And lots of pasta shells for the tube-like food arms and sand to make the rough body, the spiny body. And so you'll also need today um, some paints, a paintbrush. Now, if you have other type of paint, you don't have to use watercolor. You can use any type of paint. And for some reason, if you don't have paint, you can use crayon or pen to color it in. You're going to need water. My water is turned to orange. You need a thing of water. And then, of course, you need scissors and glue. So pause the video at any time that you need to pause the video and um, to stop. Okay, so grab your materials. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna try to cut along the line of your sea star. Now, for some reason, if you wanna create your own sea star and make an, a larger sea star, a smaller sea star, you are more than welcome to use your own paper. You don't have to use this. And you have so many pasta shells and a lot of sand where you actually can make even more than one sea star for your habitat, your tide pool habitat. And this is a great practice of trying to stay cutting on the lines. And remember, we're not perfect. Ms. Coza has already made so many mistakes of cutting on the line, and that's okay. Nothing is perfect. If we notice this sea star, it doesn't look perfect, right? He has some curly, some curly arms that curl. <clears throat> okay, then after you're done, what I'd like you to do is we're gonna paint our sea star. Now I open my, like that. I first get my paintbrush wet, and then I pick the color I wanna do. Now, don't use too much water because you don't wanna saturate this. That means soak it. We don't wanna soak your sea star because um, because the more soaked it is, the longer it takes to dry. So you just kinda want a quick coat like this. And then, 
and pick it up. I just pick mine up like this and you can hold it because if you put it on the table, it's going to get the table paint, paint on there and that's probably okay. You just wash it off, but you can always hold it up like this. And then you have your painted sea star. Okay, the next step you want to do is you kind of want to let it dry. So you can kind of air dry it or put it out in the sun. And it might start to curl up. The sides might start to curl a little bit because paper, when it gets wet, kind of curls. And that's okay. Just flatten it. So if you need to pause the video, pause the video, let it dry, take a snack break. <clears throat> and then when it feels dry enough, we're gonna take some sort of pen and we could draw the little eye spots. I'm just gonna draw a little dot there just to represent that a sea star has these little eye spots on the arms. And then in the middle of your sea star, is the stomach, the mouth, and the stomach. And see, because mine isn't completely dry, my pen isn't really working, and I'm kind of ruining my pen, so it's a really good idea to try to let it dry. And then after, <clears throat> we can glue on the tube-like feet. So right now we're working on the under part of the sea star, the under part. And then for that, I just get my glue, and you can put glue all over, or you could make dots like that. Actually, you know what the best thing to do, I think, is let's take our glue, because we also have to get the sand on there, and, um, of course my glue bottle's not working now, put, I wanna put kind of glue all over, and I brush it around with the tip tip of my um, <clears throat> glue bottle. You always can use your finger and spread it around. Um, you can always use a paintbrush and spread it around. You just have to wash your hands after, right? Because then they get gluey or wash the paintbrush right away. So I have smeared it all around. And the more you smear it, those are the places the sand will catch, right? You don't have to use tons of globs of glue. Remember, a little dab will do ya. You don't need tons of glue, you just need to be able to mix it around. And then you're gonna take your pasta shells and one by one, put them on. And I try to have it so that the tube, it looks like the tube is up, the circle part is up. And you can put as many as you want. So these just represent the tube-like feet that stick to the rocks so that the tides don't wash them away. Oh, that one just landed perfectly. And there we go. And again, if I'm going too fast, feel free to pause it. Dun, dun. And then after you put your tube-like feet on, and I'm at wondering, are there tube-like feet in the mouth? Hmm, I don't know, let's think. I would say no, looks like no. So if we look closely at the sea star, the tube-like feet are all those little like white spots that are going across. And so there are no tube-like feet in the mouth. <laughs> and then when you're done with that, if you're not done, Please feel free to pause and then you're going to take some air sand and I just kind of sprinkle it around to give it that rough kind of sandy texture because remember uh, the sea stars they have it's like rough go like that and then you have your sea star but then don't forget that the sea star has two sides right so it has the side with the tube like feet and the stomach and the mouth now on this side has this rough kind of texture to protect it from predators, right? Nobody really wants to eat this hard, hard shell. So when this dries, you can flip it over. And mine is not dried, but I'm going to carefully put it down like that. So carefully. So now it's almost like a table. And then I could do the same thing 
Or you can wait till dry, it dries completely to do this other side. Um, because it is challenging. But it's possible. And then you're going to take your sand again and sprinkle it. can always pick up your sea star or let it dry like that you can take that extra sand and just put in your hands and put it back in the bag you can save the sand on the table and don't brush it on the floor but you can put it all in your hand put it back in your bag and then you should have all this extra um pasta shells tube like feet and sand so if you want to make your own, another sea star you can absolutely make another one you're going to want to put this in a place to dry um Try not to put it on paper because it will stick to paper. So you might um, want to keep it on its shell, on the shell side to dry. And then there's other ways to make sea stars too, with clay, Play-Doh. What other ways can you creatively make some sea stars to make your tad tide pool habitat so beautiful and come alive? So I hope you had fun making sea stars today. We cannot wait to see the beautiful creations you make. All right, have a great day.